We turn back now to the Supreme Court's decision to take up the Trump administration's travel ban and the ongoing fight over the health care replacement bill. For all that, it's time for Politics Monday with Tamara Keith of NPR and Stu Rothenberg, senior editor at Inside Elections. And welcome to both of you. So, Tam, I'm going to start with you on the Supreme Court ruling on the travel ban. It is a limited victory for the president. They did allow a reinstatement of, uh, of a part of it. How much of a victory is it? Well, it's a victory, and the president hasn't had a lot of victories on this travel ban. It's been blocked in various courts all the way up to the Supreme Court. He, he was 0-2 in the appeals courts before getting uh, to the Supreme Court. Now, at least he will be heard in the Supreme Court. Now, it is not the 9-0 victory that the president declared. There is not a decision yet. There is only a decision to hear the case. So how do you see it, Stu? Yeah, similarly, I guess everything is a win or a loss, so it's a win for the president. I don't see it ha having dramatic political implications, frankly. I think the lines have been drawn. You're either for the ban or against the ban. Uh, to to some extent, the final decision's been kicked down the road. The, the can's been kicked down the road a bit. So, I, you know, I think it's a win for the president, but compared to health care, uh, foreign policy, the jobs, the economy, I, I just don't see it as a decisive issue. All right. So, speaking of health care, uh, we know the debate in the Senate goes on. We heard Lisa Desjardins, Julie Rovner uh, talking uh, with John Yang earlier about where this the state of play is. Today, Tam, the Congressional Budget Office weighed in with and saying almost as many, 22 million more Americans would be hurt uh, by this plan, would lose coverage, which is almost as many as the House plan. Now, you've just heard there's some reaction to that from the White House. Right. The, the White House is reacting much the way that it reacted the last time the Congressional Budget Office came out with one of these blockbuster reports saying millions of people would lose coverage. And what they're saying is that the CBO hasn't always been accurate in estimating health care. So, all right, everyone, just look in the other direction. Please ignore that. Uh, and, and the other point that the statement makes is that the president said he would repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act, and this bill does it, and therefore that's what they want. Now, there are some in the Senate who actually say this bill doesn't repeal Obamacare. It, it's more of a right. modification of the pre-existing structure, um, and, and that is one of the objections. Uh, there, are, there are many out there. Stu, what is the political state of play? What are the pressures on these Republicans as they try to decide what to do about this? Well, I think they're in a very difficult position, a rock and a hard place. Um, uh, on, on one hand, they want to accomplish something. They're, they have a mandate from conservatives, Republicans, Trump backers to do something. Uh, on the other hand, they're concerned about opinion back home, and they're concerned about coverage. I got a release from Mitch. You got a release from the White House. I saw a release from Mitch McConnell <laughs> right before I came on. And, I'm and glad we are all well said, covered here. The Senate <laughs> will soon take action on a bill that the Congressional Budget Office just confirmed will reduce the growth of premiums under Obamacare, reduce taxes on the middle class, and reduce the deficit. Premiums, taxes, deficit. What McConnell didn't talk about was health care quality of coverage. Or out-of-pocket expenses, which the CBO report says could be massive. And voters care about these things. Exactly. They care a lot about these things. So, Stu, again, I mean, as you, you I mean, you follow these, the, the, the political pressures on these well, members of the Senate as they think about the ones who are up for re-election. Judy, I was looking at some numbers, and it's re really stunning. Um, what's the one group, that, the two groups that are supposed to benefit most from this health care bill? Uh, younger voters and healthier people, right? Because they've been subsidizing older people and people who aren't as healthy. And what group is most opposed to the American Health Care Act and most critical of Donald Trump? 18 to 34 year olds, younger voters, the kind of voters that should should like this. So I think it's a real problem for Republicans. And, we, and we'll s certainly see what happens. So there's so much to ask you about, Tam. The president has been tweeting a lot over the weekend, continuing to today, about the reports uh, that the Obama administration had information about Russian hacking interference in last year's presidential election and didn't do a lot about it until after the election. The president's going after uh, former President Obama, saying he's the one who's to blame. He's uh, he's the one who obstructed. Where does this get the I mean, how, how successful a strategy is this? The president's position on Russian hacking and meddling in the election is wildly confusing because previously he had said it was a hoax that was invented by the Democrats just to explain their loss in the election. Now, I guess he's okay with the hoax as long as it's president, former President Obama's fault. Um, and, and 
President Trump does have a remarkable ability to make everything President Obama's fault one way or another. Stu, um, the president has, this has been the monkey on the president's back for months and months and months. He doesn't like to talk about it, but it, it seems as if this particular report that came out a couple of days ago in the Washington Post, he seized on that. Uh, I think you're right. He's looking for some explanation to prove that he was right and Obama's wrong. It's all Obama's fault. Um, look, I think President Obama did. One thing that Donald Trump said is correct is that President Obama did assume that Hillary Clinton was going to win the election and that he could not take on the, uh, this issue publicly. But can you imagine what Donald Trump would have said if a few weeks before the election, Barack Obama got on television and said it's all about the Russians taking over elections? Trump would have said it's rigged. The yeah, election's rigged. He already was saying it was rigged, and that may have influenced how the Obama administration reacted. That's and, what they're saying. And in fact, privately, that's what the Obama uh, folks are saying. Just very quickly, something that we kind of overlooked in all the other news last week, and that was uh, the announced by the Supreme Court that they're going to take up a, Stu, a redistricting case that affects the census that is going to have a big effect on how our politics this uh, is potentially. This is huge, or as some people say, huge, uh, <laughs> because this goes to the very heart of how districts are drawn, who draws the districts, and that goes to the very heart of who gets elected and which party benefits from the how the districts are drawn. So this is a thing absolutely keep uh, keep an eye on. Uh, the court has been very reticent to get involved in the issues of the, is this a political question or not. But uh, by taking the case, I guess they're going to address it at least. The backdrop is that uh, the way dist redistricting, gerrymandering has, has been happening, Tam, uh, quickly, it's benefit of the Republicans, and this is a chance to look at that. Well, and redistricting that uh, has made seats safe, ha, you know, is influencing things like this very health care debate uh, because uh, members of Congress are more worried, particularly Republican members of Congress, are more worried about primaries from the right than they are about a general election fight. Well, that one's in the fall. So is the big uh, travel ban uh, argument. We're going to have a lot to look forward to. But in the meantime, we've got so much to cover right now. <laughs> Stu Rothenberg, Tamara Key, thank you both. Politics Monday. Welcome. Thanks, Judy.